10 states, bills have been introduced or passed to protect freedom of speech on campus or to punish students who attempt to suppress the right of others to speak freely. Seems relatively non-controversial. Scott Ross, though, was the director of One Wisconsin Now. He opposes these laws, and he joins us. Scott, I don't know if you saw the interview we just did, but it was with a, a self-described progressive on the campus of Evergreen who has been physically threatened because he has a different view. And this kind of thing is happening on a bunch of campuses, and I would think that sincere liberals would be upset about it and would be trying to fix it, but they're not. Why? Well, Tucker, first of all, thank you for having me. And there is any, nobody who should defend violence or threats or disorderly conduct, but I don't think that the bill we're seeing, particularly here in the state of Wisconsin, meets any of those thresholds. What's happening is we have a coordinated effort to try and suppress free speech by government on University of Wisconsin campuses to intimidate students, faculty, and administrators from discussing critically important issues facing the public policy debate. I don't know who writes your talking points. I mean, do you live in this country? Are you watching what's happening on college campuses? I mean, a lot of them, not just Evergreen and Berkeley, but lots of campuses where people stand up and they're like, I disagree, and they're shouted down and people threaten them. That's a real thing. That's not a creation of this show or Fox News or the right. I mean, that's totally real. Why aren't you upset about it? It's, I, I don't understand why the president is, is banning them from coming in, because we need to provide support to this situation. Okay. I mean, I don't think anybody doubts that, that a lot of these are decent people fleeing the worst possible circumstances. But I want to get back to a question that I think it's fair to ask, and I just want to flesh out your answer a little bit more. What is in it for American citizens? It's also fair to ask, why should we pay for this? And there is some risk. There's always going to be some risk. Mm -hmm. Why should we assume that risk? You a Black Lives Matter group in New York City threw a Memorial Day party and barred anyone who was not black from attending. This is what they said. Being intentional about being around black people is an act of resistance. This is an exclusively black space. So if you do not identify as black and want to come because you love black, pe black people, please respect the space and do not come. Lisa Durden is a postal commentator and Black Lives Matter supporter. She joins us tonight. Lisa, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Good to see you again. You're doing well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was confused by this because I thought the whole point of Black Lives Matter, one of the points would be to speak out against singling people out on the basis of their race and punishing them for that. Because you can't control what your race is, and yet they seem to be doing that. Explain that to me. Intelligence organizations are counter-intel people. I mean, it's a huge group. But look, this has been going on for a long time. You can hardly blame his intemperate language for all of it. But in the, in the 18 terror plots that have been foiled in the last couple of years, two-thirds were hatched apparently by people who would be affected by this temporary stop on immigration from those countries. So why would that have been a bad thing, two-thirds? Look, I, I don't know. Like Cato Institute did a study, and they looked at people from 1975 to 2015, uh, and, you know, 3.5 3. million uh, uh, refugees have come here. Not a single one has, has committed a terrorist attack. So that's just a big number. And so we, we have to do this as the world is rather than the way sometimes maybe the president and others might want to see it. This is not a clash of civilization. We've got to effectively from law enforcement and intelligence and human intelligence go after the threat. And doing the travel ban uh, is not the most effective way. And yeah, that sorry. comes from, uh, from Look, the I, I'm sorry, you, you threw out a fake statistic. I don't know if some think tank gave it to you, but I mean, here are the actual Cato numbers Institute on this. Institute is a okay. notable think tank on I, the I'm conservative side. I'm just telling you, I'm not, so look, I'm not, not attacking. It, I'm, I'm not attacking. I'm, I'm just fact. saying, here, here are the actual I, I, facts. May 17th, 2016, a guy from, two guys from Somalia busted with bomb-making material. November 16th, another guy from Somalia, Ohio State attack, as you know. September 16th, another Somalian. Here's another uh, Af Afghan, Somalian, Iraqi, Somalian, Somalian, Iraq, Sudan, Iraq. I mean, those, this is all yeah. within the span of a year, people arrested for terror plotting. Look, I'm not impugning everyone from Somalia. I'm just saying this is real. 